welcome all of you this evening to our Ascension Day worship service. Special word of welcome to those who are worshiping with us online this evening, and a word of welcome to Arbor Song, a choir from Concordia Ann Arbor, and we're so thankful to have them here to help us with our worship this evening. Everything's going to be up on the screen for you this evening, but if you're a person who has been craving to hold that book in your hand that's in the pew in front of you, we're using the order of evening prayer. It's on page 243 in the front part of the hymnal. Uh, it might be useful to some of you who like to read music as we go through this order of service this evening. Evening prayer on page 243. We begin this evening with our first choir anthem. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and 
and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. Amen. You may be seated.
reading from Acts, the first chapter. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God.
Please stand to honor the person and the work of Jesus as it's recorded for us in the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. O Lord, have mercy on us. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text, the reading from Acts chapter 1. Jesus is gone now. At least he's hidden from our physical sight. And his ascension was witnessed by his first followers and And there they stood, gazing up into the sky, and even the angels didn't seem to startle them. At least there's not the usual fear not that was the typical first words out of angels' mouths. Instead, their question hangs in the air. Why do you stand looking into heaven? Is it all over, or is it just beginning? It's been 40 days since Easter. Jesus presented himself alive to his first followers, convincing them that the kingdom of God was now present in their midst. The first book that's referred to in our Acts reading is, of course, the Gospel of Luke that we read second, which dealt with all that Jesus began to do, which obviously implies that what we celebrate this evening is all that Jesus continues to do. And what Jesus continues to do is to make the kingdom of God present in our midst, right here and right now. We've been talking about it around here for the past couple of years, and I hope that by now when you hear the phrase kingdom of God, a little recording of my voice goes off in your head saying the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is the world put right. The kingdom of God is the world put right. The kingdom of God is what we had in the beginning briefly When human beings were right with God and right with each other and right with the whole creation. Now Pentecost is coming. And the grand finale of the opening scene of the establishing of the kingdom of God, the world put right through faith in Jesus, is about to unfold. God has been working toward this day ever since Adam and Eve rebelled. And now Satan is defeated. Eve's descendant, Jesus, has crushed the serpent's head, even as the serpent bruised Jesus' heel on the cross. But by the power of the resurrection, sin and death has been broken. We don't have to keep doing the same things over and over, expecting to get different results. Everything is complete. It is finished. Jesus said so from the cross. And now angels and archangels and all the company of heaven are leaning in to watch the final scenes of God's story of the world's restoration of the kingdom of God, the world put right. It's the time of the church. 
It's our time. We've been talking about the Jesus adventure. Called, equipped, sent, and restored followers of Jesus. And the Jesus adventure, people, is seeing your entire existence from the moment you wake up in the morning till you lay your head down on the pillow at night from the perspective of Jesus' birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his promised coming again and remembering every moment of every day with every word that comes out of your mouth, every look that's on your face, every attitude of your heart that you are participating in the grand finale of God's plan to permanently establish his kingdom that's the world put right when Jesus comes again in glory I was talking with someone recently who was feeling weary of all the hostility and the division that we face And not really the content of all of the talk, but the tone of the talk. This president, that president, the Equality Act, what might happen to the church, to our schools, to followers of Jesus in this country. Look, I know it's important. I know it is troublesome. But tonight, please, could you just remember that Jesus said even the gates of hell will not stand against his church? And when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? The first followers of Jesus could not even begin to imagine that the Holy Spirit-powered proclamation of who Jesus was and what Jesus had accomplished could transform every economic system, and every political agenda. Do you? Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons the Father has fixed by his own authority. God is in charge of the nations and of the world's affairs. And God is so great and so good and so powerful that he uses even the evil that exists in this world against itself to ultimately destroy it forever. That's what the cross teaches us. Evil cannot win. The greatest evil perpetrated by the human race, the condemnation and the execution of the Son of God, was the very means by which God worked our forgiveness and our eternal eternal life. He used evil of the cross to destroy evil. Look, have an opinion. Be engaged. But be prepared to share the hope that you have within you with gentleness and with respect. How? Well, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Look, our attitudes, our words, the tone of our voice, our body language, our action all bear witness to Jesus who willingly suffered at the hands of religious and political authorities for the purpose of saving the world. And when you and I get sucked into the prevailing culture of anger and derision, we discredit our witness for Jesus and his kingdom. That's the world put right that comes by way of the cross. Then Jesus was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. The cloud in the Old Testament is the visible representation of the real presence of God. Jesus left the Father and the Spirit, and he entered into this broken world at space and time, and now he returns. Writers and movie makers are fascinated with the idea that there's another dimension 
that has a portal in our world, or the idea of an opening in the space-time continuum through which one passes into a different reality. Gee, I wonder where that idea came from. The kingdom of God, the world put right, is the real presence of God, and it is very near to us. Sin in this world continues to separate us from fully experiencing it, but that sin has been destroyed by Jesus on the cross, and by faith in Him, worked by the Holy Spirit, we have access even now to little glimpses of the real presence of God every time we hear His Word, every time we remember our baptism. Every time we receive Jesus' body and blood. Oh, I, I wish that the space above the altar right now would open up just a crack. And that you could all get a glimpse of the glory of our future, shielded by the blood of Jesus. But that the angel said you have to wait for. This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. And when he was gone, Luke reports, the disciples worshipped Jesus. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple blessing God. Let's do that. Let's worship Let's find our joy this evening, forgiven, born again, alive in Christ, then blessing God in every word, every attitude, every action of our lives. It's not over, it's just beginning. Amen. Now the peace that passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in this true faith unto life everlasting. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For Synodical President Harrison and District President Venascus, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For President Biden, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Please stand. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.
Once again, thank you for all being here this evening and perhaps some appreciation for the choir this evening. I was going to offer to redo the ending, but they figured it out. Uh, follow the pastor, right? Good. You got, they're having a brief reception for the choir in the cafe uh, over off the front of the Family Life Center. If you'd like to stop by uh, and greet them for a few minutes after the service here, feel free to do that. Uh, Sunday will be the seventh week of Easter. We'll look forward to seeing you all there. Mm -hmm. 